When I reflect on the masterpieces of Japanese animation that I enjoyed growing up, the adult-oriented feature-length films of the late 80s and early 90s that were available either dubbed or subtitled on VHS in that one corner of the local blockbuster, when I think back on the many great works of that era that so impacted me at a young age, one film in particular doesn't really enter into the conversation as often as it should, I feel. And, gun to my head, is my favorite feature-length film of anime or Japanimation as it was known back in the day. And that movie is Wings of Hanamis, known as Oritsu Uchugun or Royal Space Force in Japan. Wings of Hanamis is Studio Gainax's 1987 debut feature film masterpiece. Studio Gainax is best known for their smash success 1995 OVA series Neon Genesis Evangelion, which to this day, it's still kind of shocking that it was aired unedited on Japanese primetime television for kids to watch because of the high level of violence in the show. Also nudity and fetishization and generally adult themes. It was aired on American television a bit later in a heavily edited form, but Evangelion is the series that really put Gainax on the map. But nearly a decade before Evangelion catapulted Gainax into international stardom, they released this debut film, this great work, Wings of Hanamis. And even more amazing than the fact that a young, small, relatively inexperienced crew of animators could achieve this level of quality in a debut film, is the fact that it was released at all. Because if you go back and watch this movie, it seems to have almost zero marketability. And indeed, it wasn't necessarily a commercial success. It's completely an adult film, it's a human drama, it doesn't feature ultraviolence or cyberpunk themes or science fiction or, or fantasy per se, though it is set in an alternate world. Or sexualized characters, overly stylized visuals, etc. It doesn't share the tropes or selling points of a lot of the hot anime of that era. Wings of Hanamis is really a human drama set on the backdrop of a space exploration story. It's about kind of failed characters who are more or less outcasts, who don't really fit in in society, find each other and find some companionship, and their kind of feeble, grasping relationships don't even necessarily pan out. But all the while, the country in which this story takes place is at war, and is working on this fledgling, underfunded space exploration program, whose goal it is to send a man up into space for the first time, which has never happened in the world in which this story takes place. And I won't really get into the storyline much more than that, because I want anyone listening to this review who's never seen Wings of Hanamis before to seek out this film and watch it. So I'm not going to spoil anything more about the story, but I want to kind of make a case as to why, to me at least, Studio Gainax's debut is the finest anime film that I've had the pleasure of seeing. And I've seen a lot out of that era. Again, the golden era of Japanese animation the late 80s through early 90s. First off, Wings of Hanami's looks fantastic. It has this kind of hand-drawn cell animation style with muted but lush colors, great saturation, and just really creative backdrops and characters, costumes, but it's all realized in this beautiful hand-drawn animation style, completely lacking CGI or computer effects. And that was common to anime in that era, and a lot of them look spectacular. But Wings of Hanamis in particular has a great frame rate, a lot of frames per scene. It kind of avoids that thing that a lot of anime did or does, where they feature long frames ostensibly in attempts to cut down on animation costs. The animation flows really well, it looks fantastic, but even more than the visual quality is the creativity and design. You could print screen this film when you're watching it, and so many of the shots would be suitable as a computer desktop background. You just have these great shots of hangars, aircraft, the city where Shirotsuki, the main character, lives, and all these wild characters and colorful little towns and stuff. So visually, it's stunning. And then the audio. Whether dubbed or subtitled, the voice acting is excellent, and even the English dub which I first saw as a kid, avoids some of that stale, low-grade voice acting that a lot of the anime that was dubbed in English at that time featured. 
Stuff that is reminiscent of, for example, the original Resident Evil video game on PlayStation 1. For what it's worth, Wings of Hanami's is excellent in both dubbed and subtitled versions. Actually, the male voice actor who portrays Shido in the Japanese version does even more of a kind of understated, almost monotone portrayal, but it works nonetheless. Then getting to the soundtrack of this film, the score was penned by Ryuichi Sakamoto, arguably Japan's most influential musician of the 20th century. If you don't know his band YMO or his solo works, even outside of soundtrack composition, the guy has toured the world, been based in New York City for the longest time, and played with all the greats. Somehow Gainax got him to do the soundtrack for this film, and it's just phenomenal. You can hear it right now in this video in different sections, but it kind of crosses multiple genres with a couple main themes that refrain throughout, and it's just an excellent soundtrack that avoids being too leading the way that film soundtracks can be, where they kind of dictate how you're feeling or tell you how you're supposed to feel about scenes, kind of spoil what's about to happen. But the soundtrack works so great and is totally listenable on its own. No matter how great the audio and visuals are in a film, though, without relatable characters and a compelling plot, you can't have a great film. And rest assured, Wings of Hanami's delivers on those fronts as well. Shido and his crew of misfit would-be astronauts are humorous, hard-drinking, fighting, kind of outcasts. The Royal Space Force, as it's known, is kind of a joke. An underfunded branch of the military that doesn't fight anyone. They wear these goofy costumes, and they keep having men die in their failed tests, and haven't done anything successful. One great scene is when Shirotsuki, who volunteers to be sent up to space, much to the chagrins of his comrades, as people just keep dying. He goes to this hangar to see some of the top secret craft that the engineers are working on. And there's a bunch of these old engineer guys that come out of the woodworks and descend and totally dump on these young would-be astronauts. There's a great line where the chief engineer tells Shiro's colleague, you guys don't know anything, we've been building rockets since before you were in itch and your daddy's crotch type thing. The main and peripheral characters are likable, there's so many great scenes, and the film doesn't fall prey to overexposition the way a lot of films do. It just kind of lets the story play out. It's a bit of a slow burn, so pacing-wise for film viewers who are used to watching space sci-fi or superhero movies, you may find the pacing a bit slow. I've never had an issue with that, I've always kind of enjoyed just settling in and marveling as a story unfolds if the story catches my attention from the beginning, which this work always has for me. But even if you find it a bit slow to start out, I really suggest you stick with it because the story evolves into something truly compelling. Wings of Hanami's explores philosophy and religion quite a bit, and because of that, this film has even been called avant-garde or art house, and I don't really know what those terms mean, but personally I would not classify this film at all as avant-garde. When I think avant-garde, I think of films like THX 1138, my favorite film by George Lucas, or things like that. Uh, kind of more experimental works, which this is not an experimental work. Honing in on some of the finer details of production, uh, the way Gynax cut the scenes, just the pacing of this one, is where Wings of Hanami's really starts to stand out from the crowd. The timing of each scene, how qu quickly they cut between scenes, the overall number of scenes, really approach the level of a Hollywood film. And it does the best thing an animated film can do, which is to exploit the format. If this film had been done in live action, it would have cost too much and it wouldn't have worked. The animators realized some fantastic ideas and achieved a great level of execution because of the fact that this is an animated film. But you just see this great degree of control. There are many comedic moments, in addition to some scenes of intense action. A lot of the first half of the film is lighthearted, and some of the techniques Gynax uses reflect this great dark comedy feeling. Even though the film deals with tough concepts like death, poverty and suffering, war, creation, our purpose on earth as human beings, the kind of nihilism or apparent lack of real purpose to our lives, etc. It deals with themes like that, but there's this great dichotomy, this lighthearted aspect to the way the scenes flow, 
in the way the soundtrack lifts up the visual proceedings. And the film never comes off as pretentious or taking itself too seriously, not to me at least. I've revisited this film a number of times as an adult, and I look back to when I first watched it when I was 12 or 13, and it just impacted me so much from the beginning. And I still feel it's such a fantastic work of film, animated or not, and I think my nostalgia, this kind of rosy tint I impart on the film, because of the great memories I have of watching it as a child. Also, I watched it with my first Japanese friend, an exchange student who was in our town, and he loved it too, and he told me about how great Ryuichi Sakamoto is and turned me on to his music. I have great memories of watching the film, but I don't think those color my rational analysis of how excellent the film is because it just really is excellent. Again, I cannot stress enough to viewers of this review, just go out and watch it. Watch it once or twice and let it sink in. Wings of Hanami's is a human drama, a fine achievement of animation, and just a wonderful film that has aged so well. It looks fantastic on Blu-ray. It's almost unbelievable the film is over 30 years old. The themes it covers are just as relevant today. It doesn't have any of the gauche, fetishized, otaku cringiness that a lot of anime from the era had with these corny upskirt angles and nosebleeds. It eschews that kind of nonsense and is just a fun romp from start to finish that also tackles some tough themes and leaves the viewer with a chill up his or her spine at the end of it. It culminates in this spectacular ending and the main refrain comes in again at the end and it's just so satisfying. Thank you to anyone who stuck through this long-winded review. This is my first one on the channel and I don't know if I'll be doing more, but I wanted to lend my analysis of this work to the world of YouTube film reviews just because I've watched it so many times and I've seen a lot of the classics of that era. And if I can influence even one or two people to seek this film out and enjoy it, then my goal will be realized. So thank you all so much. Please enjoy Wings of Hanamis and have a wonderful day. <laughs>